Got another bottom fed coil clear miser to talk about today, and this thing is called the Delta II. And she is manufactured by a company called Joytech, and they're out of China. So here's the deal. I want to go ahead and take you guys up close and show you this thing broken apart, how this thing works, the adjustable airflow, the coil heads, all that goodness. And then what I'll do is I'll come back, vape on her, talk about the pros and the cons, and tell you where you can get one. Sound like a plan? Let's do it. So here's the Joytech Delta II. You got the drip tip section, you got the base section, you got the tank section, and then you've got the coil head section. And let's just start with these massive ass coil heads. You receive two of these bad boys, and these LVC coil heads are 0.5 ohm. So you receive two 0.5 ohm LVC coil heads. The recommended vape is 20 to 45 watts. So you have massive slots in this bad boy. You got three massive slots. One, two, and then three on the other side. And the beauty is you can adjust these slots. Adjust them like so, depending on whichever juice you're using. So if I'm using a thinner juice, like let's say I'm using a 70 PG, close it off, something like that. Maybe open it up just a little bit. If I'm using even thinner juice, close it off even more. Because the thinner the juice, the more it's going to wick, the easier it's going to wick. It's not going to need it to be wide open. But since I'm using a thicker base juice, I'm going to open this sucker up wide open, baby. Wide open, 70 VG, 80 VG, 90 VG. I keep it just like this all across the board and then up top inside here you got your coil and you got that screen up top for spit back very very similar just like the atlantis coil head it is a vertical coil by the way very very similar to the atlantis basically the same type of design so i brightened it up a little bit i know it's a big change but i did that so you can see what's inside there you can see the vertical coil the space all right, so here's a look at the base of this coil head. Look at this pin, the pin, the whole size of the pin is just freaking massive. And that's where you're getting that airflow from. It's not the airflow just from the base of this device of the Delta II, but it's also the air hole that you're getting, the size of the air hole you're getting from the pin, from the base of this coil head. And you got it, man. I mean, that's where you're getting your airflow from. It goes through the base of the actual device, through this sucker, and then to your coil. And you got tons of airflow, tons of it. Now there's your lead. There's one of your leads right there. Okay, so the pin comes out just like so. There's that lead we just saw. Here's that rubber grommet, and the rubber grommet, what it does is it insulates these leads. Okay, so there's your coil right there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and destroy this coil. I'm going to go ahead and pull this lead. That way we can see where the other lead is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this screwdriver. I'm going to push the rest of this material, the organic cotton, and the screen out the base. And there's the screen. Alrighty, so here's the coil head pretty much all broken down. You got the actual coil head and here's the remaining portion of this coil all stretched out. You got the pin and you got this rubber insulator. And once again, here's the screen. Okay, so now onto these two materials. Now, these two materials are totally different from each other. Originally, when I put this video together, I assumed, and I was totally wrong, I said that this was organic cotton. People are actually freaking out now. I mean, a lot of people are raging about it, saying that it's fiberglass, that this is fiberglass. It's the same material that's in the Atlantis and the Nautilus. It is very similar. I don't want to say it's the same material because honestly, I do not know. This material right here definitely seems very cotton-esque, but this material, it falls apart. It's flaky. It's like I said, very similar to the material that's in the Atlantis. See the other end of that lead? See if I can get a top view for you. Now onto the take section of this Delta II. You got three sets of three window slots, three on one side, three on the other, and then three on the other. Unfortunately, you can't see light. Light's not able to escape through, which means you cannot see the level of your juice in here because the shaft is blocking it off, and that's just a big con to me. But inside the tank section, you got a chimney slash shaft section, which is built in. Everything about this tank section is built in. You also have a Pyrex tank, which is built in as well. And how to fill this sucker up is you fill it up in between the shaft section and the Pyrex tank. You fill it up all the way to the tip top of that shaft section. This thing holds three and a half mils of e-liquid. I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. Here's the top of the tank. Drip tip hole. Every drip tip that I've owned, that I've used, is compatible. Fits snug as a bug. But the drip tip that comes with this device is this sucker. Fits in just like so. And I'll tell you what, it is a snug, snug fit. Snug fit. So here's the base of this device's Delta II. You got two slots, two massive thin slots, one on one side and then one on the other and how it works is you got this ring and you spin the ring to adjust your airflow. Okay, close her off, open her up, open her up, open her up. 
nice restrictive ring. Here are your threads, nice buttery smooth threads, and then you got a stainless steel non-adjustable pin at the base. And I do want to mention about these threads. These threads are about average, nothing special. Cool head screws into the base like so. Make sure she's tight. And then what I'll do is I'll keep it open. I like to keep my slots open wide open because I'm using thicker VG based uses. Next step what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and prime this sucker up with some e-liquid. I even juice up the slots a little bit. Speed up the process. Fill her up. I'm going to go ahead and use my dropper. Stick it into the side of the tank. Make sure you fill it up in between the shaft and the glass wall, the Pyrex wall. Okay, and as you guys can see, she's filled up to the tippity top of that shaft. That's what you want. No empty space. Screw the base and the coil head in there. Set your adjustable airflow the way you like it. I'm going to go wide open, baby. So that is the Joytech Delta II. Let's go ahead and take her back to FaceTime. So she's filled up all the way, got the 0.5 ohm cool head in here, wide open, I mean wide open all across the board. Vaping her, got her sitting on this Vapor Flash DNA 40, vaping at 19.5 watts. We're going to start at 19.5 watts, and I got the airflow about a quarter open on each side. And the reason why I've got those slots on the cool head wide open is because I'm using an 80 VG based juice. So yeah, here we go, 19.5 watts. Vapor production is a rockin' flavor is okay. I mean, it's good. It's full-on flavor. It's about like the Atlantis. Anything like the Subtank Mini, no. It's not as good as the Subtank Mini. At lower wattages, that's where the Subtank Mini shines, in my opinion. 19.5 watts with a 0.5 ohm cool head and that Subtank Mini, the OCC cool heads. I mean, it's a rockin' and rollin'. With this, it needs more power. So what I've done is I've taken her up to 25 watts. And that is where she starts to get going. I mean, she starts to pick up speed. The flavor really starts to come through. So now what I've done is I've taken her up to 30 watts and I've got the air slots on each side about halfway open. Now I've taken her up to 35 watts and I've opened her up about three quarters of the way open on each side. And for a freaking clear miser, I mean, that is intense, man. Intense vapor production. The flavor really jumps. You know, for me, and this is all subjective, some guys like to vape this thing at 40 watts. I got a friend that vapes this thing at 40 watts. He's using a thinner base juice than I am, but that's 80 VG based juice, and it's able to keep up at 35 watts. That's that's pretty damn impressive. But for me, with a thicker base juice, like an 80 VG based juice, a 70 VG based juice, even a 60 VG based juice, my preferred wattage is like 28, 29, even 30 watts. So I bumped her down to 29. Five watts and I closed her off about halfway open on each side the airflow that is oh man that's my speed I mean I am oh man I, I'm just, I'm speechless now the flavor is freaking awesome flavor to me at higher wattages I'm getting better flavor than the Kanger sub tank mini okay so for the Kanger sub tank mini if you're the type of vapor you like to vape or you prefer to vape you know at lower wattages you want you want to push less power for more flavor that Kanger sub tank mini may just be for you but for this vaping at higher wattages I say at least start at 25 watts for me I say you know 28 29 30 watts with thicker VG based juices is where I like it so yeah first the quality control rating this thing from a 1 to 10 scale I give it a 7 7 and a half out of a 10 machine oil there was no machine oil on this thing this thing was spotless I mean I didn't even have to rinse it I could probably just vape right away when I got it but I did rinse it I, I tasted no machine oil and as far as the machining I mean the metal is thinner it's not as you know hunky it's not as hefty as something like the Kanger sub tank mini I mean the Kanger sub tank mini right now the reason why I compare in this thing to the Kanger Sub Tank Mini is because I think the Kanger Sub Tank Mini is the best tank out in the market right now for an affordable price. That's competitive. As far as quality control, machining, do I think it's as good as the Kanger Sub Tank Mini? No. Their, their stuff is, Kanger is just, whatever they're doing, whatever they're doing in their shop, okay, they're doing something right. Their stuff is spotless. This, it was spotless, but it just doesn't, it doesn't feel, it, it, it just doesn't look as high quality. But that being said, it's not bad by 
any means, it's just that the Kanger Sub Tank Mini, <laughs> it was just spotless. So first I wanna go ahead and go over the cons. First con, this thing does not disassemble all the way. I mean, you can't take this thing fully apart. The tank, the Pyrex tank that's in here, it's a part permanently of this device. But yeah, if you were to break this sucker, the Pyrex tank, you would be shit out of luck. And also, since the chamber is permanently part of this device, you can't take it apart and clean it. Another con, like you guys saw in the close-ups, you got the nine slots, the nine sets, or three sets of nine slots, three on one side, three on one side, three on one side, and because of that, I can't see where my juice level's at. It sucks. I want a freaking window. I want a larger window where I could see my juice level at all times. And here's another thing, and this is a biggie in my opinion, the rebuildable section, well it doesn't come with a rebuildable section, but you can purchase it separately. And because this thing does not come with a rebuildable section, that is a freaking downer. I remember when I first got this, I was looking at it, looking at it, and I was going, hmm, I heard they have a uh, rebuildable section, where the hell is it? And then I found out you have to purchase it separately, and I was just like, huh. Why the fart should I have to purchase the rebuildable section separately? Include the son of a bitch. To me, if I'm an online shopper, that's just more work I gotta do. I gotta add this thing to cart, then I gotta go find this thing, the rebuildable section, gotta add that to cart. Why not just go ahead and buy the Kanger Sub Tank Mini? Hell, the rebuildable section already comes with it. Listen, there's a lot of you vapors out there that aren't newbies. You've been doing this for a while. You know how to rebuild. You got rebuildable tanks galore, and all you're looking for is a device like this where you can pop a coil head in there, and it's just convenient. I get it, but there's newbies out there now. They're just getting into it. I mean, thousands of vapors are freaking starting to vape on a daily basis, and if they walk into a vape shop, they're going to want something that's not only convenient, but that gives them options and helps them save money. And if this had the rebuildable section, they would save a lot of money. We would all save a lot of money. And also, look at the coil heads. I mean, you guys saw them in the close-ups. They think freaking be a pain in the dick to rebuild. <laughs> I mean, am I speaking English? They would be a pain in the dick to rebuild. A pain in the freaking dick. And let's just say you're a newbie, and the last coil head you have in here dies out on you, you don't have anything else, you don't have another device, you've just been relying on this thing, you're SOL. But if this thing came with a rebuildable section, all you gotta do is go on YouTube, search video on how to rebuild this sucker, and I guarantee you'd find my ass showing you how to do it. Woo! So yeah, that is a big deal to me. Rebuildable sections, having a rebuildable section like the sub tank mini included is big. So Joytech, do it. Include it in the package. Okay, so now on to the pros. First, you got adjustable airflow, and the adjustable airflow, I mean, is a massive amount of airflow. The two long ass slots on each side. The adjustable airflow ring has got the perfect amount of restrictiveness. It's not going to spin. I mean, when you set it, it's set. Second, this thing holds a good amount of juice for a tank. I mean, it doesn't hold as much as the sub tank mini, but it holds more than the Atlantis. I mean, 3.5 mils of e-liquid, like I mentioned in the specs, and that's a good amount. As you guys saw, the coil heads in this are massive. You got slots on there first that I've seen and you adjust the slots to the thickness of the juice the thinness of the juice for example I got an 80 VG based juice in here open those slots wide open and I've gotten full on flavor full on flavor no wicking issues and also I've put a 90 VG based juice in here had full on flavor and had zero wicking issues but if you're using a thinner based juice you can close those slots off 50 50 blend even thinner close it off close it off close it off and you'll be good to go great option and another thing to be mentioned this cool head that I've been been using has lasted me two weeks. Two weeks and it's still going strong and I'm still getting kick-ass flavor and vapor production as you guys saw. Just for titties and skittles what I did was I emptied the tank and put a 90 VG based juice in here. I'm gonna vapor chain vapor for you and just to show you her performance. Zero dry hits with a 90 VG based juice in here and I'm pretty much getting Full on flavor. I mean, it's muted a little bit. It's not like an RDA, but it's enjoyable. And here's the thing. It's because of the shaft. The shaft in here is big. I mean, it's got some girth. It's, it's wide, okay? Wide shaft like the Limo. It's even wider than the Kanger Sub Tank Mini. A good bit wider. I mean, a good bit. A couple millimeters wider, which is big, big in vaping hardware. I would say anything above 70 VG. This thing it rocks and rolls, baby. Another pro and the last pro is the 510 connection threads. Buttery smooth. This thing fit on all my devices, all my mechanical mods, fits on all my variable voltage, variable wattage devices, sits down and makes a connection as well. So the shop that sent this device to me to review for you guys is a shop by the name of VaporDNA, VaporDNA.com, I also have a link in the description. Okay, they're also selling the Subtank Mini, and the Subtank Mini, they're selling it for $36.99, they're selling this bad boy for $34.99, so that's only a $2 difference, and you receive the RTA section with the Kanger Subtank Mini, you receive all that, this doesn't, you have to buy 
buy it separately. Plus, this thing's out of stock right now. The Kanger Sub Tank Mini is not. But I gotta say this, this thing's kick ass, man. It's kick ass for the guys that want to vape or they have no choice in vaping thicker VG based juices, 80 VG, anything above 70 VG. The airflow, it's different than the Kanger Sub Tank Mini. I actually prefer the airflow for this device. I get more airflow and it's just it's just a different airflow feel, if you know what I'm saying. And also, this device is made for the vapors that want to vape at higher wattages, you know, 30 watts, 40 watts, higher than that. Even some guys are vaping 50, 60, 70 watts, which is crazy. I mean, you must have to use a thinner base juice to keep up with the wicking. So the big question and the big answer, if I'd have lost this thing today, would I go back out tomorrow and buy one? And the answer is yes. I've been enjoying this so much at higher wattages and with my thicker VG based juices that yes, I would buy another one. I want to see the rebuildable tank section included in this device. I don't want to go out and purchase it because now I got to go out and find it. And I can't find it anywhere. It's out of stock. Son of a bitch. Comparing this thing to the Kanger Sub Tank Mini, oh my gosh. I mean, there's so many things about this device that are better to me than the Kanger Sub Tank Mini, but there are things about the Kanger Sub Tank Mini that are better than this device. It's just crazy. It's like they're, they're similar devices the way they vape, but they vape differently at different settings, if that makes any sense. I do. I have to give credit to Kanger. One, they include that rebuildable section, and two, the build quality of that device is better than this. I think Joytech, even though the quality's not bad, it's just not up to snuff with the with the Kanger products, with the Kanger Sub Tank Mini and the Kanger Sub Tank. Here's the good news, Joytech. If you're watching, there's always room for improvement. Make it to where you can disassemble the whole thing, clean it, make it to where there's a Pyrex tank on the outside, and make it to where you include an extra Pyrex tank because there's no extra Pyrex tank. Like I said, the, the Pyrex tank that's in there, it, I can't get it out. It looks to be part of the device. So if you were to break it, what the hell are you going to do? You're going to have to go out and shell out another 40 bucks, 35, 40 bucks, which, which sucks. But yeah, I do recommend it. Like I said, I'd go out and buy one if I lost it. it it's been that enjoyable. This is Rip Trippers. And remember, smoking is dead. Vaping is the future. And the future is now.